So you may wonder why we've been talking about Q and K. Why do you need both? Well, the reason is that is if you know the numerical values, you can actually predict the direction a reaction will shift using those values. So we can see what happens in the lab, but we can also make predictions. So um, at equilibrium, Q and K are the same. So again, we talked about K being at equilibrium. So there's no net loss or gain of products and reactions. Remember, though, that does mean things are still being created and still uh, um, products are still being combined to form reactants. So if Q is less than K, the reaction proceeds from left to right or towards the products. So the amount of product increases and the amount of reactant decreases. And both of these factors increase Q. So we're trying to get it back to that equilibrium. So if Q is greater than K, the reaction proceeds from right to left or towards the reactants. Again, the amount of product decreases and the amount of reactants increase, lowering Q. Again, trying to get that system back to its equilibrium part. So um, here you'll see that Kp is given for this um, dinitrogen tetroxide uh, equation. So you have to be given that information. You can't just guess what those numbers are. So we're going to predict the direction in which the reaction will occur to reach equilibrium, starting with 0.2 moles of N2O4 and 0.2 moles of NO2. So our Q expression is going to be the pressure of NO2, and that would be squared um, over the pressure of N2O4. So since I have the moles of each, and I have the volume, and I have the um, temperature, this is really a PV equals NRT problem that I need to solve first because I need to know pressure. So this will be a little review. So P equals NRT over V, and then I'm just going to substitute in the 0 0.20 moles. And the 0.021 liter ATM per mole Kelvin, 373 Kelvin over 4.0 liters. And we solve for that P is 1.5 ATM. So I'm going to substitute that in. And notice I did, these are both the same, so their pressures will be the same. So, um, I'll have 1.5 ATM squared over 1.5 ATM, which gives me 1.5. So 1.5 is less than 11, so my Q is less than K. So equilibrium will shift to our products. Or the right. Okay, so if we make more product, this number will go up and it'll eventually, uh, and this number will go down, eventually getting us to our 11 again. Sorry. And then there is an interrelationship between the two uh, values. So if you know, um, one of them you can find the other one so that can be useful sometimes if you can't find um, the other value okay so kp is kc times the r um, times t and make sure your units of r are consistent so just like any other gas law problem we need to make sure we know that um, so calculate the kc for the reaction system 2NO plus O2 yields TO and O2 gas if Kp is 158 at 1,000 Kelvin. So um, this is going to be in terms of ATM, just so we can use the same relationship. So we are going to substitute Kp equals Kc times RT to the change in the number of moles. So I'm going to substitute in my Kp is 158. Kc is what I'm trying to find, so I'm going to multiply that times. I'm going to actually use brackets, the 0 0.0821 liter ATM per mole Kelvin times 1,000 K. Again, I'm getting that from here. 
and then my change in moles. So again, products, there's two moles here, three moles here. So two minus three equals negative one. So I'm raising this whole quantity to a power of negative one. And then it's just 158 divided by that whole quantity um, multiplied and raised to negative one, which is gonna give you a KC value of 1.3 times 10 to the fourth.